Hi everyone and welcome back, or if you're new to the channel, feel free to have a look around. I hope you enjoy the content, I have more videos about Python and crypto. But today I'm going to show you how you can add a callback to your dashboard. I'm using Dash and Plotly, just like on my previous video, where I show you how to create a simple dashboard to track your portfolio. Um, so today I'm going to show you how you can add a callback to one of your dashboards. And a callback is something that you can add to your code that um, it's actually a decorator and it calls a function every time a specific input is changed by the user. So in this case, I'm updating the this input from the dropdown with the new stock. And there's a function here that gets called and returns a different chart. So that's what the callback is doing. Every time there's a new input here, there's a function returning a new chart to be presented. So I'm gonna show you how to, how to do this. Well, maybe not exactly like this one because there's a lot of unnecessary code going on on this page and I really wanna focus on the callbacks. But if you're interested in creating a, a dashboard just like this one, stick around until the end. I'm going to, to let you know more about it. All right, let's start coding. And you're going to need to import some things first. Uh, make sure you're using uh, Dash 2.0. Um, there, there's been some changes and it's really important that you have the latest version. Um, all these stuff, it's really simple to, to get started with, just pip install and you want to have these file, this file ready. If you want to know what's in here, it's very easy. So it's just a list of transactions. You have the date, uh, you have the, the quantity, it's very simple. And here I want to add a chart with Tesla price. So I just load it from the folders. Remember, everything's provided in the GitHub folder, so you should have this file there. And over here, I'm gonna use Plotly to create a candlestick chart. I'm not gonna have too many stuff going on here. Um, no legend, no title, just simple chart. And I'm using the T candles here. So date, open, high, low, close, and you have a candlestick chart with Plotly. Okay, so this is the simple part. It just, I'm creating a dashboard, um, sorry, I'm creating a chart and I'm gonna use this code on my dashboard. So what you need to have a dashboard ready is to create an app. And in our app, I, I have this cell here just for a quick reference. Uh, so I'm gonna have a layout and I'm gonna create a container with one row it's going to have only one row, but that row is going to have two columns inside. And we're going to tell the width of this column and the width of the second column. And on our first column, we're going to have a chart. And our second column, we're going to have a drop down. Okay. So I'm going to create a simple non interactive dashboard. Okay. You can ignore this error. And so this is what we just created, a chart, Tesla stock, and there's a dropdown here. And you can see that the dropdown isn't doing anything yet, but it's definitely working. So how do we add some interactivity? If we look at the code here, remember I told you there's one row and there's two columns. On our first column, we have just an horizontal row, um, 
uh, header h5 this is html this is this is this thing price chart and and then we have our graph so this is the chart that we created above this is our fig main and the width of this column is going to be nine um, i talk about this on my previous video if you want to check it out but it, the width of the dashboard is always 12 so every column the sum of every column width should be 12. So that's why this one is nine and this one is three. So in our second column, we have another header, H5, and we have the dropdown, ticker selector. So I didn't show you this variable before, but it's right here. And this is the variable that lets you have the drop down items. So it's a dictionary that lets you select the, the variable. And the way it works is that it displays a label, but the value behind the label is what I'm what I'm getting. It's hidden from the user if you if you want to think about it like that. So the user sees the label but the functions are getting the value. I'm going to talk about the functions next, but you really need to understand this, okay? So you have to have a dictionary on your options for the dropdown. So, and this one has a width of three. And I want to show you how we can quickly change something because I don't like the dropdown on the right, so I'm going to demonstrate how you can change that very easily. That's why I really like dash. So you just select the order of the column here and you update it. You run it again. It's still not interactive, but we're going to fix that in a second. So I, I copied our code to another cell here and I'm going to show you how to create the callback from scratch. The way you do it is, in the end of the layout here, you're going to add a decorator with the at sign, and you're going to say app callback, and I like to keep things neat. Okay, so what does this mean? So I'm going to add a function to this uh, callback, but for now, we are using this input, so whatever the user chooses from the drop down, this is the ID. You have to have the same ID. And the input that we're getting from this selector is going to be the value. So this is also matching. Okay, and we're going to use this input and we're going to output something for the chart and that something is the figure. So the function that we're going to add is going to return a figure to be added in the chart, which is this one, the graph. Okay, so what's the function? So this is a simple function and you can name it just name it something that you can understand what what it's doing. Once you have uh, more callbacks, it gets tricky to to follow. And you have to have the function right beneath the callback for it to be linked somehow. Okay, so I'm starting to write the function render ticker chart, and you had the parameter. Okay, this is also important. So the first thing on the ticker chart function you want to have the price history read. So I'm using, this will have the value that the user is going to select is going to be the, the, the letters, the, the ticker letters. Remember the label, the label is visible, but the user 
the, the values are the tickers. Okay. After that, we have the price history and we can draw our chart. So I'm going to pick up the code here and you'll see how easy it is. So you create your chart separately. You come back, you take the code, come here and just have to add this. So you're creating the figure again. The name is the same. You have the function and you need to return something. What are you going to return? Easy. You're going to return fig main. Okay, so before I run the cell, remember we just added this part here. Let's see if it's working. Oops. Of course. Uh, yep. Okay. I ran it. I don't know why I keep getting this error sometimes. Oh, anyways. We have the chart. Apple. Let's see. Okay. It's working. See? It was very easy. So just by adding this callback right here and this function, you can have an interactive dashboard. Okay, now I want to show you something just a little bit more advanced. Uh, sometimes you want one callback to have multiple outputs and that would happen if you wanted the user to select a stock here and it would update like a chart and some tables like I showed you uh, in this example these are different tables so one input is affecting multiple outputs and the way you do it so I'm gonna again I'm gonna give you a quick example here I added a div an HTML div just below our drop down here and actually, let me do, um, another horizontal row. Don't forget the comma here. And I added another div just below our drop down, and its ID is div input. So right now you can see it doesn't have anything. So there's the horizontal row and it is still interactive. So I'm, I want this div to show uh, whatever value the user selected, so the, the ticker. And I'm going to do it like this. So first of all, our function is going to return not only the chart, but it will also return the value itself, so the ticker. So if we add this here, it means we have to add another output. And just to be sure, you want to put this inside a list and you want to add another output. So the output is going, remember, first is the ID and you can see that the ID is div input. So it will go to div input. And what exactly is going? And it will uh, feed, so to speak, uh, this is not a good choice of words, the children of the div. <laughs> so this will make the ticker value to show up in the div. So let's see if it works. And it took a while, but it did. So now we have a div below our dropdown that is also being updated with our inputs. And you can see that it's changing. So that's how you add callbacks 
to your dashboards. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this part right here with the two outputs may be a, a bit more tricky for you to understand, but uh, I think this example is, is very easy to, to pick up on. And if you're still watching the video, you probably want to know more about Dash and Plotly. So I'm almost done recording my new course that shows you how to build a dashboard just like the one I showed you earlier. I'm going to leave a link in the description to join the waitlist. Once it's ready, I will let you know. And if you already signed up, thank you for your support. I promise you it's, it's really... I will release it soon. And you can see multiple things. Actually, this page, I show how to create a page just like this in my previous video. But you're going to have a lot of information here about uh, your stocks. So this is actually a data table. And this chart, I think it's quite nice. It's kind of interactive thing. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and you are more familiar with callbacks now. They are very useful, but sometimes a bit tricky to use. Don't forget to leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for your support. I read all your comments. You're very nice. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.